So injectors are going in. Um, as you can see that little wear plate right there. I got it all buffed off so there's no rust left on it because I don't want it to be when the injector hold down thing comes on there. I don't want it uh, sitting on rust so I've uh, cleaned that up really nice. Injector has a new O-ring in the middle. Focus. Okay, an O-ring there and a new brass washer if it would focus on that, which it won't. There you go. And then what I do with this is I clean that surface so that it makes the injector clean again. And I clean this surface because the only place that it was clean, the rest of it has rust except for the exact spot where it was wearing on that wear plate. The rest of it's got some rust on it. So to clean this all up because it's probably going to find a new mating surface now that uh, I've got a layer of powder coat in there and that wear plate sitting up a little bit higher. It's going to find a new mating surface and even if I didn't, have that powder coat in there it probably have a new mating surface anyways because of because of the uh, uh, wear plates coming out and then going back in and they would be turned a little bit or something like that you'd never be able to manage that so clean surface here clean surface there and the injectors groove in there you can't see it on my hand but anyway that's all cleaned up so that it can find itself a nice clean mating surface here again and we'll torque them down and Hopefully they stay nice and snug. Injectors in. Now, back to this brand new fuel line that I bought. This is the return line, and it's got this number nine return valve there. So my plan is to see if I can take this apart right here, pull that clip out, pull that clip out, connect that hose direct onto here. We'll see how that goes. I may not be able to, We'll see what happens once I get it apart, but uh, hopefully I can do that and then I don't have to cap that one. Otherwise, with my delete, full DPF, EGR, whatever delete, I have to get a cap for that. So, and I don't have that and I don't want to have it because I'd rather just not have extra garbage on the truck and make it look like it's supposed to be that way. So, that's the plan. See how I make out with that. So, here's what I ended up with. I got pulled this out of there just to make it a little easier to work with. It's just a Little, let me lay it down there so you can see it. Goes in that groove right there. <clears throat> then I went to uh, pull this out of here. And where are we? Okay, lay it down because it won't focus. So I had to cut that hose open um, in order to get it off of the nipple because the other side, you'll see right there, I just pulled on it. Of course, it won't focus. There you go and it just twisted off so now i have this piece twisted off inside of there which you won't be able to see because it's completely dark so i'm going to cut this hose off past that nipple whoops right there past the nipple then stick it on there hopefully do that without breaking it if i do break it i have one more shot at it but if you're gonna do this job um use extreme caution and cut the hose open where you're removing it because otherwise like i say bust that nipple off there pretty easy it's pretty brittle not very good stuff so yeah I think it's gonna work but got that accomplished um, that's what the fitting looks like without that on there here's the other one I've slid that in there I put a little bit of white lithium engine rebuilders grease whatever you want to call it in there to lubricate it so it's a little easier sliding on that stuff will dry out and turn to you know waxy whatever so it'll not hurt anything in there Daddy. it's good with all kinds of rubbers so there's the piece that i'm throwing in the trash and i'm just gonna make these two back up put the clip back in and i've got a eight injector return line <laughs> so here's the passenger side get that out run straight across of course i greased every one of those little o-rings just to make them slide on real nice them slid in there and then with this 90 going straight up it just looks perfect Got a perfect spot to lay, so out of the way and not all that nonsense in there. So be much better than just putting a cap in there. Pretty happy with that. Um, so all these little things on there. So yeah, pretty happy with the way that looks. Uh, heading over to the other side now. Uh, clean up the little wear plates and put the other injectors in. Check this side nicely closed up, so no garbage going to get in there. 
So a little bit of a gripe here with ARP. Bought all new ARP bolts for manifolds. Uh, up there, bought all the uppipe bolts. I can only use that one on the manifold because the bottom down there goes into an open hole which gets dirty on the back side. And then the original GM bolt has that piece on the end with no thread on it. ARP didn't compensate for that. Left you a bolt like this that runs right to the end with threads. And it hits the trash that's in the end of the hole. You can't clean the trash out unless you got a thread chaser. So now they've made their bolt too long and you can't use them. So pad driver side, I just used all my original bolts. And uh, this side here, I just swapped the bottom two. Uh, focus. That there's the original. See, there's the ARP. If it'll focus, come on. Focus, Sally Mae. Come on, right there. The ARP's got a washer behind it. It's a nice clean bolt. That one there's a little bit rusty still. I don't think there's anything wrong with my originals, so I didn't expect them to be in that good a shape. I probably wouldn't have bought any of them if I had thought they would be that good. But even like the uh, the manifold bolts, there was really nothing wrong with them. So they're all new now, anyways. But uh, yeah, there's my gripe with ARP. They give you a washer, but it's still that much too long, and it will not tighten that gasket. I tried. You got to really torque it up, and it doesn't. Still doesn't touch the gasket. So anyway, I did put these two in. I had the two on this side here. I did have them in there. Oh, son. Getting in there, beautiful to have the sunshine, but I'm getting in my camera. I did put those two bottom ones in, but I just grabbed extra washers and put them in, but I decided, well, that was kind of a shady way to do things. So instead of that, I uh, went back and swapped them out with the originals. Uh, 28 foot pounds on the, um, oh, come on. 28 foot pounds on all the manifold bolts, according to what my list says, so. Got them torqued up. Uh, next thing is the uh, downpipe going into there. And as soon as that's in, then we've got this back end done. I can put this vent and the dipstick back in there. Actually, that could go in right now. Torque that back up and then going back to the front and put in uh, the um, thermostats. So I've got gaskets in my kit there. Well, there's my kit with all the rest of my junk, so got gaskets for that. So we'll get these put on, the downpipe on, torque tighten that up. Uh, turbo heat shield still off. Any of those heat shields that still fit, I can put those back on. As uh, I've got the room for it, might as well be there, I guess. Um, these here downpipes, my downpipe and uh, up pipes are all ceramic coated. So they don't need a heat shield. So see it's all that fancy black stuff. So they say they don't need a heat shield. They keep in the heat really well. So we'll see how that works. Hopefully it doesn't burn my truck down. But if it does, I guess find somebody to blame. <laughs> now for a bit of a gripe against HSP. Oh, a beautiful, nice kit and all. But this thing mounts up here on the turbo. And here on the pipe, and the old one had a mounting bracket that went on here yet, that secured this down pipe to the, uh, to the, I think it actually went to a different bracket in the back here, but it secured it somewhere. Now this thing, the entire exhaust pipe, putting a lot of pressure on this thing. I had to pull this thing out quite a bit in order to get it to fit, because it's got all that pressure on it. And all of that pressure is now hanging on the back of the turbo instead of hanging on to a bracket that was sitting in the back of the head. So a little bit of an oops on HSP's part. I think they could do a lot better job than that. It does look nice and it's got lots of room there, but but uh, definitely could do a better job at making that so it doesn't break the turbo off in half or something. But hopefully it doesn't. We'll see what happens. So this here is the line that I've invented. It screws down into that fitting right down there and then goes straight into the pump so I don't have all this crap coming up here on the passenger side. Um, I just cut it off of the original line that was down there. I cut it off over here 
and put a little bit more of a bend right here and a bit of a twist so it gets around this line here and then it's going to slide down right there we're going to slide down on top of there um I'm going to slide right in on there screw back in there come on too dark right there so that's what's gonna anyway i was planning to throw all this crap away and just go over the other side of the engine but that just is not gonna work we've got too many places these uh returns and stuff tying in and it don't have anything to have to cut and braise a bunch of stuff like that and i don't know not into that so then i'll just leave it like this and we'll deal with it as it comes but this here is my eliminating all the garbage coming across here at least so up that little bit of real estate that's it all installed so it comes up makes that 90 that hose was already pre-bent to a 90 so that's didn't have to murder it too much and it just stays nice and clear right here it gives us lots of room so that's the twist i put in here i put a little twist in here to clear this and uh, i sharpened this 90 here because this thing used to come there the other fuel lines are out of the way but it used to come right across here and tie in on this thing so i just I just actually came right across here and I just cut it off and sharpened this 90. Put a little bit of a twist in there. That's got that. Looks like it fits really nice. There's no kink. If you can see there, there's no kink in this thing. It's all staying nice and round. So I got pretty close. Took a bit of fiddling. Uh, bent it with my tubing benders and then uh, stuck a wrench on the shaft itself just to kind of get it in place and just twist it so that it would let all the slack off. and sit there really nice so i'm pretty sure we could put pressure on this and i mean this line probably should have been changed anyway but hopefully it won't leak but i'm sure it won't blow off because it's it's sitting here nice and solid like this there's no pressure trying to pull this out so that part i'm sure will work whether this line's too gummed up in the inside i don't know it seemed like it was all right so we'll run her and see what happens so that's my fix for a fuel filter delete